So I have to have this make sense. So there was a report, I guess it was yesterday or what have you, that Sham Sharinia put out on his Twitter page. And he talked about this in an article that he wrote for The Athletic. And here's what, here's what it says. So it, this is about the Atlanta Hawks making a move to go get Pascal Siakam. Okay, sounds pretty good. And, you know, again, we, we you know, we, I know we've been in the market and this, that, and the other. Here's what Shams had to say. Atlanta, quote, this is a quote, quote, Atlanta has offered a package centered around DeAndre Hunter, A.J. Griffin, and draft compensation to Toronto for Siakam, league source is saying. But the Raptors are believed to have upped the price on any possible deal at each turn. Okay, and by the way, one of the other quotes that I saw about this story was the Raptors balked at the idea of trading Siakam for that package. I'd balk too. Like, I'm embarrassed for Landry Fields. You mean to tell me that we're looking at trying to land a multiple-time all-NBA player? He's been a second and third all-NBA player. He's a multiple-time all-star. We're looking at getting rid of our trash in DeAndre Hunter, a nice young player, but obviously not at Siakam's level, and draft picks. Like, that's really what we offered to get him? Again, I'll go back to this question. Are we really serious about changing the direction of this roster. Well, you can't give up all kinds of picks. Wait a second. Wait a second. We're at a desperate point. You know, at some point, we can't just sit back and say, well, you know, we got Quinn Snyder and we'll just coach our way through it. Your coaching wasn't all the problem last year. Okay. I know a lot of y'all think that, well, you know, Nate McMillan was the whole problem. No, he wasn't. But no, no, Nate McMillan was not the whole problem. And here's the problem that we're really running into right now. As we sit here on August 9th, the year of our Lord, 2023, this Hawks roster isn't better than what it was when we lost to the Celtics. Bottom line, we, we can spin it and talk about things and change and hopes and wishes and prayers. and all. Right now, our roster is not better than it was when we lost to the Boston Celtics. And if we're going to make a play for a Siakam, you're going to have to give some things up. And, and look, at the end of the day, if I have Siakam, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, and whatever, uh, you know, add, add a Capella or, you know, some player into that mix, I'm going to have to roll the dice with those guys. Well, but he's a rental player. Okay, but you don't even make the trade. You don't even make the trade if you don't if you think that he's not going to sign a long term deal. You have to you have to make that offer knowing that he's going to sign a long term deal. You have to argue from a position of strength, not just well. Let's give you our trash, and then you know we'll give you DeAndre Hunter, who we don't want, and draft picks. Like, how does that make that make sense? Make it make sense that that's what we're offering to get a multiple-time all-NBA caliber player. Now, if we're not going to go after Jalen Brown, then the next best guy that's available out there on the marketplace is Pascal Siakam. And again, I I have my issues just as far as not the player, but I again, that seems like an offer that you offer it hoping that the Raptors will take it but you don't really want them to take it, right? Because again, he's going to be a max guy. He's not playing for less than a max contract. I promise you. And his brothers even made mention about that, that he's like, you know, oh, yeah, you think we're going to the Hawks or whatever? You know, he's not playing for a dime less than max money. Whatever that number ends up being, he's playing for max money. So you better commit to the idea of, adding another $120, $150 million worth of payroll to keep Pascal Siakam. So, A, I don't know that the Hawks are ready to do all of that. 
<clears throat> I'm not convinced or sold that they want to get in the luxury tax moving forward or have that kind of money tied up in the guys. But if you're going to make an offer, let's make an offer. If you, if you really think that Pascal Siakam is a difference maker and you plug him in here and, and we can go be one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, if you really feel that way, then offer a package that's worthy, not one of our trash players and some draft picks. Sorry, I mean, I'm not impressed by the deal that's being offered for Pascal Siakam. And maybe the Raptors will take less at the end of the day. I don't know. I know right now that they're, that they're again, the, the quote was they balked at the idea of trading Siakam. I'd balk too. I'd, I'd, I'd end up balking too <clears throat> as far as if that's the compensation package you're going to give me, one of your trash players that you don't want, who you overpaid for, and some of your draft picks, and yeah, a nice young player who can shoot the basketball. But let's see if A.J. Griffin is going to be second, third team all NBA. No, I'm not doing that deal. I'll hang on to Siakam and try to re-sign him or what have you before I get into all of that. Are we are we really committed to doing what we have to do to change up the dynamic of this organization? Are we really committed to it? See, I don't get that sense. And, and you can spin to me all these narratives about this and that and whatever like that. Tony Ressler can tell me about how, how desperately they want to win and this, that, and the other and all this other fall to roll and good stuff. I'm not convinced. I'm not. I'm not convinced about what the direction of this team is. Here's what I do know. We're not better today than we have been in the past. If we grab Pascal Siakam, we're a better roster. And again, unless you tell me that we're going to sign him long-term, <clears throat> I, I, I wouldn't even make the deal unless I had a guarantee of that. So why even offer? Again, if you're offering a deal, you're thinking that he's going to, you know, he's going to be here long term. But you're not just giving, you know, again, I think the whole thing is a mess. When I read this trade, I was like, are we really serious about trying to make a difference on our franchise? Are we really committed and serious? Again, if if you're just going to offer a trade for the sake of offering a trade, don't offer a trade. Don't don't offer anybody. Just stay out of the mix. It's okay if you don't want Siakam because of the money and different things like that that's going to be attached to him. I mean, seriously, if if you're not going to commit to the financial aspect of him, then don't even get involved in the trade. I, I got no problem with that. I, but I would rather not insult the Raptors organization and have them laugh at us about the compensation package that we're offering than just stay out of the, stay out of the way. Stay out of the way. And yeah, maybe the Raptors aren't going to get what they want. But I, I look at this, and and again, I've got eyes. I can see we're giving away DeAndre Hunter because, I mean, probably part of it's the money aspect of it. But DeAndre Hunter and draft picks and, and A.J. Griffin, like again, we were talking about six players for Jalen Brown. I'm getting rid of my trash and you know, one of my younger players and some draft picks. Who's going to fall? Who? What GM's going to fall for that? What GM's going to look at that and say, well, that's a sweet deal for us. Make it make sense. Are we really committed to being better? Are we seriously committed to doing what we have to do as an organization to get better, to be a top-tier team? If we're going to offer packages like that, no wonder the Raptors aren't going to bite on something like that. No wonder the Raptors are looking at like, uh, yeah, no thanks. Make it make sense. Right now, we're not a better team than we were a few months ago. That's a fact. We're not better. And by the way, August 2nd or sorry, October 2nd or 3rd, whatever day training camp opens up, it'll be here before you know it. And we're going to roll this thing back out with the same guys and hope that, you know, well, you know, it's going to be better and all this, that, and the other. I don't have a lot of confidence right now in what the Atlanta Hawks are doing. Sorry. I mean, you can miss me with that whole narrative. 
All right, as you make it hard your first listen, be sure to go into whatever podcast platform that you listen on and let us know that you're an everyday listener to the program. So we call them our everydayers, and we definitely thank you so much for being a part of our growing community. But let us know that you're an everyday listener, a five-day-a-week listener into the program.